my Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. There's a movie in which the main character is former military, a type of special forces, and he has managed to start a new life, living a very normal life in a hardware store, and he witnesses great injustices at different moments in the movie, uh, great injustices done by, by the mafia. Um, they did many terrible things to innocent people. And he decides to defend the innocent people by going after the members of the mafia. Okay, so it's, it's a bit of a violent movie. Um, and uh, because of the skills that he acquired uh, as being a member of the special forces, he's quite successful. Okay, and he gets all the way to the boss, uh, to the big boss of the mafia. And the boss who realizes right away that this man is coming to kill him, he asks a very interesting question. He says, what do you gain by my death? And the response from the former military man is peace. He's seeking peace, which he won't find by killing people, of course. But it's interesting that he says he is seeking peace because we all seek peace. We all have that desire within us for, for peace. God has placed it there. There are many promises of peace around us. Money, possessions, pleasure, security, comfort, professional success. Jesus, you also promised peace. You said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I'm going away and I will come back to you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. The world can't give that peace that really satisfies that true peace and Jesus who who promises us this peace right he says he will give us this peace he is someone who performed many miracles he is someone who rose from the dead so that gives certain credibility to him who says I will give you peace because he did some pretty amazing things and if he can do those things, if he can rise from the dead, oh gosh, he can give me peace. And plus, there is the collective experience of many, many Christians who have lived before you and me, and also are living right now, who have found peace by loving Christ. There is not much experience in human history of people finding peace by impulsively giving in to pleasure. Jesus, we, we address you. We talk to you. That's what, this, that's what this time of prayer is all about, talking with you. You promised us peace. How do we get it? How do I get it? How do you want me to get it in my life? Pope Francis, in his apostolic exhortation on holiness, talks about how the spiritual life is a life of battle, a battle against our inclination to sin. And I wanted to read a brief quote from that apostolic exhortation, Gaudete et Exultate. He says, The Christian life is a constant battle. We need strength and courage to withstand the temptations of the devil and to proclaim the gospel. This battle is sweet, for it allows us to rejoice each time the Lord triumphs in our lives. 
as long as we battle, there will be victory. Even if there were a fall, we get right back up, and that's, and that's a victory. So when we battle with Christ for love of Him, in order to love others, when we do that, there's peace. So Jesus, I want to fight for you. I want to fight in the way you want me to, against my evil inclinations. But not just against my evil inclinations, but in order to love you, in order to to bring your joy, to introduce your forgiveness to other people, to introduce you to other people. Interior peace does not come from giving into our every impulse or giving into our comfort seeking. It comes from aligning my life with what Christ wants. But we all have those inclinations that lead us in a different direction. And so it's an invitation to fight. To fight by fleeing the occasion of sin, by praying more insistently for help, by praying for others, by using our time in the way that God probably wants us to use it. And if we fall, we get it right away, running to the arms of our Father God. A Christian is a fighter, right? It's not someone who gets discouraged. And it can be easy to get discouraged, you know? But, um, but Jesus, you don't want us to. You're with us. I bet most of you are familiar with what a piñata is. Um, piñata is, is popular in different countries, but particularly in Mexico, uh, in my experience. And it is um, it is a decorated figure, uh, usually made out of like cardboard or paper mache, and that figure could take all different kinds of forms. It could be something that looks like a star, or it could be a donkey or a dog, and um, and it's filled with candy and. And the idea is uh, is that the person gets a chance, blindfolded, gets a chance to hit the piñata with, with, with a stick or with a bat, with the idea of eventually trying to break it open so all the candies fall out, you know. Um, it can be quite fun. And recently, some good friends of mine gave me a very interesting explanation for the traditional piñata. Um, it has a great theological uh, meaning to it. And so they told me that normally a figure uh, of the piñata is one that looks like a star. So it's basically like a big ball, and it's got seven, or it could have more, but uh, typically has seven cones. Um, these cones, you know, like, like, like the birthday hat cones, okay, like stuff, uh, like cones like that that cover a whole... Um, in that, in that ball, and so, um, and so those those seven cones, those seven um, points, represent the seven deadly sins. And then the participant is blindfolded and is given a bat or a stick, right, in order to try to hit the piñata. Um, and being blindfolded represents faith that we believe without having seen, right? Or, or believing is seeing. Um, because sometimes faith is, well, it's it's seeing, so it's not exactly blind, right? But we can't, but we won't necessarily be able to understand things with our, um, with our own intellect. Um, God is much bigger than us. We won't be able to see things with our, with our regular senses, but with faith we can. Um, and then, and then here comes my favorite part. Um, hitting the piñata represents the spiritual battle that we are fighting against sin, you know, um, in order to defeat sin, right? To smash sin. And as we smash sin, as we smash the ball, uh, the star, the candies fall. And those candies represent the fruits of our struggle, the fruits of our spiritual battle. That sweet victory that the Pope was talking about. And one of those fruits is peace. Right? That I fight for love of Christ. That Jesus, I fight for you. So that you may reign in my heart. So that I can live according to how you want me to. 
So, Jesus, and we can also ask the help of the Holy Spirit, are we, are we spiritual fighters? And spiritual fighters are cheerful, by the way, okay? Because we know by fighting, just by fighting, we're pleasing our Lord. Just by fighting, we are, we are growing. In fact, the fight is itself is a victory. Okay, um, and um, so let's ask ourselves and let's foster that desire. Am I a spiritual fighter? I certainly want to be. Or do I give in to uh, temptations without much of a without much of a fight? But if we did give in, let's get right back up. That's being a fighter, and that will help us. Um, fight the next time that we're tempted. So Jesus, where and in what aspect of my life do you want me to fight for love of you? You know, to, but to fight tenaciously, right? Just like someone who's going after that pinata, just hitting it, you know, really going after it. Where can I fight? What defect? Um, maybe it's uh, it's in order to grow in patience or to grow. Um, uh, to grow in the virtue of holy purity, to fight against my laziness or my comfort seeking. But Jesus, help me. Help me do your will, and please give me that peace which the world cannot give, but only you can give. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you've communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.